Hi, the name is Marty Silverman. I'm a stone carver from New Jersey, Jackson, New Jersey, for those of you familiar with the area. Um, I've been doing this for about 35 or 40 years. Um, I can't be precise because I'm getting old and forget, but about 35 years worth of stone carving. Um, I started doing this because of a family background in stone carving. Um, my great-grandfather or my grandfather, and my mother was an artist also. I taught public school art, and now I'm having fun. It's my time. It's my retirement. Um, one of the shows that I do is the one that's my most favorite, because the Sugarloaf shows are one of the few that still allow actual demonstrating and creating the craft on site. What happens is the public is now not as aware of the fact that artists, that people make craft. It becomes much more valuable, becomes much more special when you purchase something from the person who made it, as opposed to a box from a store, an unnamed store. The point being is that if you come to a Sugarloaf show, you'll actually meet the people in the booth that create the craft. And that's critical because you really know what you're getting and it makes it very special to you. Besides, you get to meet me. Stone carving is an ancient craft, uh, one that has um, a history to it that probably is unrecordable in terms of time. One, one of the items that is carved, is a, the items that are carved, they're a variety of stone. And the stone comes from various sources, geological sources. I'll show you later stone that comes from the High Sierra mountain range, which is lava rock and volcanic rock. This happens to be a piece of pink lace alabaster that I'm working on now. And it is imported from Italy. It's a very rare piece of stone. Um, I'm creating a family group. Um, I happen to believe strongly in family and the importance of family, so that motif runs throughout my work. You'll see later either in abstract form or semi-abstract form. Abstract form and abstract art is much more universal because more people can relate to it as opposed to very realistic and specified kinds of art forms. The actual craft is done by taking a block of wood and actually the block of wood is most appropriately seen in this kind of form. It was just a square, a plain block. And then what I do is I try and envision what I want to do with the stone. Sometimes, as you'll see shortly in my abstract work, I have fun with it and it becomes a developmental process whereby I start carving and that gives me an idea and one thing leads to another, to another, to another, which is constantly changing throughout the process of the work. That's why we are always working on a table that moves. And in that form, it's really a fun kind of an item, a fun kind of a carving. Here I'm being much more specific, so I have to be careful in terms of my measurements and proportions to make sure that I don't run out of stone or run out of a place where I need to have something happen. And you'll see how that works in later pieces. Basically, all you do is use a variety of stones and chisels to carve. I'm not going to get very exuberant here <laughs> because we don't want to you know, spread any dirt. And also you need protective eyewear and things like that when you do this kind of work. But basically, all I'm doing is carving away what I don't want. The question always arises, if I carve something away that I don't want, or do want, what do I do? You're looking at the only person in the entire United States who never makes mistakes. What I do is create new opportunities. So what happens is if something does come off, and that has a relationship to your expertise as a stone carver, you just modify it. So what happens, it becomes plan B or another way. I've got a figure here, a young child, a young child in the mother's arms over here. And what I'm doing now is I'm carving down far enough so that this figure stands out and becomes three-dimensional. The entire project will be three-dimensional. This has not been carved extensively yet because this part is not critical to the overall perspective that I want to make important. So right now, what I'm doing is just carving out the figures. Once I get done with the carving process, once I carve and rough out everything, and incidentally, at home, in my studio, 
I have power equipment that does this. Were I to have to do this with a hammer all day long, I'm not old enough to be able to make this sculpture be finished. <laughs> so what happens is I have an air hammer, or excuse me, an air chisel, that instead of my having to hit this chisel into the stone, it's a power-driven equipment, and I can just carve with the power equipment. That makes it faster and more expeditious in terms of my being able to complete work. There are various chisels that accomplish various things, various points. When I rough out with the chisels, I can then start smoothing with rifters or sanding machines or sanding process. And this is where all this fine dust has come from, where you literally shave it off. It comes off like sawdust. And this is helpful in getting these sharp edges. If I wanted to have a sharp edge, I would go this way and this way, and therefore accomplish that sharp edge. The process then goes into a sanding and polishing process. The sanding and polishing process is something that I would love to farm out because the creative process basically is done. I've finished all my carving. I've finished doing all the aesthetic work. And now all I have to do is 25 to 30 to 40 hours worth of just sanding with increasingly finer grits of sandpaper and finishing papers until it becomes perfectly, perfectly smooth. The last number of hours, depending upon the piece, is all done actually in a large padded box under water to free the grit from the paper and from the piece so as to get every infinitesimal scratch out of the piece. You can't polish it, as you'll see shortly in my other work, until you get every scratch out. Were you to do that, were you to put some kind of a wax or, or, or a finishing process on a piece without getting all the scratches out, it would show up immediately. One of the exciting things, however, that comes out of the sanding and finishing process does occur when you get that fine polish and the beauty of the stone comes out. Right now, you really can't see the true beauty of the stone. What I can do is approximate it by getting the stone wet, and you can see all of a sudden the grain of the stone, the grain and the beauty of the actual stone, which then is exemplified by the polishing process that I explained shortly, or just a few moments ago. In addition to my carving of sculptural pieces, I also do fountains, taking the similar kind of stone and carving it into waterfalls so that you can have them in your home. I also do large outdoor commercial work also. And again, that's not bought here to the Sugarloaf Show, but it's shown in photos, photos in my booth so that people can see the kinds of things I do. All of the artists here at the show have their own specialties and their own beautiful things that they create for you in your home. And basically, some of the things that they can't bring that are just too large or too exotic are then represented in the booth so that you can see the full range of things that artists do. It's an absolute joy and a pleasure for me to be able to carve. It's a joy and a pleasure even doubled when somebody appreciates my work and makes that purchase.